more than 250 free schools are open across England. Funded by government and free to attend, these brand new state schools offer a high quality education to children from all backgrounds. I thought it would give her the best opportunity to engage with the subjects that she was learning. Every morning when he comes in for school, I can't catch him, he's off like a rocket. If I compare it to other schools, this is maybe number one choice of mine. She's going to get opportunities that the, my older two kids didn't have. The kids are all going to get the best education they can. What more do you want? Free schools are in demand, addressing deprivation, the need for new places, and driving up standards. Free schools are opening all over England, and many have been set up by teachers. The Island Free School in the beautiful town of Ventnor on the Isle of Wight opened in September 2014. But the picture postcard setting masks an uncomfortable story. We have, um, sadly, um, some of the lowest standards in the country. I think last year our GCSE results, 5A to C with maths and English, we were the lowest performing local authority bar one in the country. The island stands out as a highly underperforming area compared to all the different authorities that surround it. Setting up a free school is not something that can be done overnight. It's a rigorous process that takes huge commitment. This school has been in the planning since 2012. Could you just go to each classroom and just make sure there's a few chairs outside of each room? Yep. So that One of our aims when we set out to open the Island Free School was to make sure that we had really strong links with parents. We can do lots of things. Without their support, we can't achieve everything we want. We've got a lot of parents who went through the education system on the island, whose children are now going through the education system, and it's not seen as important by some people. It's not seen as integral to a future by some people. There's a very low aspiration, especially here in the South White. With two months to go before opening, local parents and their children have been invited to an open evening. Tonight is the start of engaging with the parents. We have a 15 minute meeting initially with the parents and the children where they're going to choose their options for the enrichment programme. We're collecting all the data in, but we're actually getting to know them, our expectations of them, their expectations of us. We decided to choose the free school because we just thought it was a fabulous opportunity for, for our child to, to be part of it. The other schools that are on the island, what with the Ofsted reports, the schools we don't think were cutting or were good enough for our child, to be honest with you. Immediately, the idea of it being a new school, so the chances were they wouldn't necessarily just accept systems that are in place. There's been lots of controversy about it, really. We went to all the meetings, you know, and we just kind of, everything, you know, that it stands for um, is, is what we want our child to do, you know. Free schools are already raising standards around the country. With a history of poor results on the island, particular focus has been placed on enabling the most disadvantaged children to access a better education. The people I really wanted to get to were the free school meal students. My concern was that they're just not going to come to an evening session for a new school. So reaching people like that was going to people's houses uh, and it was by word of mouth only. The most successful way of advertising the school, Nigel and I spent a winter and a spring going to people's houses parents' concerns were all about um, uniform and discipline and happiness. More often than not, will my child be happy at your school? Playing music delivers an awful lot of the curriculum within one subject. You have to be dedicated. You have to understand the importance of practice. And those disciplines um, develop the self-discipline that's required to be successful at 16 in GCSEs. And so music will lend itself to the entire curriculum. I'm looking forward to all the new teachers and all the new people we're going to meet and all the new opportunities. The teachers seem really nice and yeah. I like the playground. And the whole like, <laughs> ethos of the school seems really good. And, uh, and all the music. And yeah, we really like the music. And to inspire them in their music, over the summer holidays, the school has organised a trip to London's West End. We've come to go and see Stomp. It's a type of music where they make noises out of weird things. The island is really rich in music um, and we're very lucky, but 
music has become an elitist subject for many and we've got quite a disadvantaged background um, and it, it was our intention to break down those barriers and give all the children an opportunity to learn a musical instrument and be part of that wider community on the island that is so musical. Whilst music will play a prominent role in this new free school, the academic rigour of the curriculum must come first. Quite early we decided that we'd offer a fully academic curriculum, follow the English Baccalaureate, all students, um, which will bring its own challenges because if you're then saying every student will follow a fully academic curriculum, you then have to support that. The fact that it's starting something from nothing allows us to set our own foundations, our own precedent of how we want education to work on the island and that's something that's really attractive to me as a teacher. And starting from scratch means finding a new building. Like many free schools, the island will start in temporary accommodation before moving to its permanent site after its first year. Ventnor is a really special place uh, and everyone feels that it's theirs, and their personal property. And therefore when something new comes along and it, it gets the approval of those people, they just start coming in the door and wanting to be a part of things. This is Isle of Wight Radio. The school set up by Isle of Wight parents is up and running from today. 125 Year 7 students are attending the Island Free School in Ventnor. Headmaster Steph Boyd explains more. We've been doing this for two years now uh, and really by the day before everything should be okay. There's the, the unknowns. One of my staff was late because they were stuck behind a tractor. Um, these things happen. Smile. Beautiful picture. I didn't sleep much last night. I've gone through the day a hundred times in my head. It's really emotional, actually, really emotional, because they, they arrived impeccably dressed. And there were, there were no issues, they lined up in silence, they came into the school, they came into assembly. It, it, yeah, quite emotive. When I first came into school, I felt terrified, but now I feel all right. It's a new school, there are loads of new people. I felt a bit nervous, but then I got used to it. Everybody's nervous, apart from me. But I have anything to do, I'm not nervous at all. I've been thinking all week about what to say to you as we start the school. So I'm going to say one thing. If you want to be successful in your life, you need to work hard. I wish when I was 11, somebody had drilled into me that if you want to be successful, you just have to work hard. I think it took me an extra 20 years to work that out. We are going to give you all kinds of opportunities in this school. So, be successful, work hard, decide what you want to do with your life, and then work harder than anybody else to get there. Things were ideas and they've grown throughout the whole process and we're now seeing everything come to fruition. So it's just a, an incredibly proud feeling. The school has to succeed. You know, this island can't afford for this not to go well. Um, we need a school to set a standard. Have a great time at the school. We're going to have a really, really good year.